Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scrap and Create, and we're working on Graphic 45. Let's get cozy. So I'm going to use some of the ribbon that um, we send when you purchase a bundle uh, on the cover here. So I am going to use um, the blue and the ivory ribbons. Um, I'm going to attach them to the spine. They're going to come around and they're going to tie in the front. So because um, you get a yard of each one, it's going to be just a little bit too short to, to tie a pretty um, uh, bow on the side. So what I did was I split each one in half. I'm going to tape it to the spine and I'm going to tape them about an inch apart. So that's going to buy me a little bit more. And this is going to wrap around to the front. So let's go ahead and get started by applying our ribbon. And by the way, I used fray check on the edge of the ribbons to keep it from unwinding because as you know this is uh, kind of delicate so I'm going to attach it right here and it doesn't seem like it's much of an attach point but don't worry we're going to layer on top a piece of cardstock with glue that's going to help uh, bind it further <clears throat> So that buys me about an, you know, a half inch on either side of um, the ribbons, and that's going to help. Now I'm going to layer another piece of double-sided tape, and we're going to lay this on top. And, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and use my 5 eighths. And it needs to be about two and a quarter inches, I think. So I'm gonna lay this on top. Oh, it's a little too wide. I don't want it to show on either side of um, what we decorate the spine with. Okay, I'm going to burnish that. And I'm going to add our blue ribbon. Just going to lay it right on top. <laughs> Centered. There we go. There we go. Okay, so the pattern that I've chose to go on the spine is this uh, gray, and it is from the Patterns and Solids. being extra generous with the glue because it's going to hold this ribbon in place as well. Okay, there we go. It's going to come around the back. Okay, now on the front, I've chosen this red, which is also from the Patterns and Solids, and I'm going to have the ribbon come across uh, the, um, the mats here. So let's go ahead and lay down our red mat. I think there's a direction on here. I was just trying to eyeball it and see if there was. OK. 
Okay, here's our first layer. I'm going to use my handy dandy cream container to hold up my book while I add the next layer. So this is also from the Patterns and Solids. This is the same as what we just put on the spine. And I'm trying to decide if I want to put um, a black border on it before I lay it down or if I just want to lay it down with the ink edge. So let's take a look at that real quick and see. It certainly makes it pop a little bit more, but it's already so dark. Okay, uh, I've decided I'm gonna put a black border on it, so I'll be right back, and then I'll tell you the size of it. All right, I'm back, and what I, I decided to mat this in black, and this is seven and a half by seven and a half, so it's an inch smaller than the eight and a half by eight and a half um, cover that we're, we're working with. So I went ahead and matted it in black, and I gave it a 16th inch border, which means the gray is uh, an eighth inch shorter and narrower uh, than the black cardstock. Or you could say it the other way around, the gray is, um, I mean, the black is an eighth uh, inch larger in width and height. So the gray again is seven and a half, which makes the black seven and five eighths square. All right, let's see. Get my nice even borders. It looks good. Now you could run your ribbon underneath the gray, but I really want to run it on the top because I think it just adds um, an additional texture to the cover that'll make it a little bit more interesting. As you may or may not have noticed yet, this uh, collection um, doesn't have a lot of bold uh, images. It has lots of patterns. And so anything that we can do to introduce texture um, or uh, dimension is going to make this look even better. Okay, so this is from the um, the dye collection. So is this, I should pull my plate in here. This also comes from the dye pack. This is actually an ephemera card backed with chipboard. So I'm gonna get a little bit of um, elevation here. And then I've got this from the chipboard pack. And then the rest of these I'm gonna sprinkle about and they are from uh, the die cut pack. So I'm gonna start by figuring out where to put these two items. And then once I know where these are, I'm gonna run some tape behind them uh, to hold the ribbon in place, but I have to know where to put it uh, first because I wanna kinda of hide it. So it looks like right here is gonna be a good spot to run my tape, right about here. And that looks like about two inches, so that's what I'm gonna do. And if you're uncomfortable with that, you can always uh, make it narrower. It doesn't have to be two inches. One inch might be good. And then remember, in addition to the tape holding it down, we're going to glue down this die cut. And I'm not going to elevate it. I'm going to glue this whole thing down. So this, uh, which is kind of thick, uh, is going to also help cement uh, the ribbon. So we'll need two pieces the same length. One's going to hold the um, the cream in place, and one's going to hold the uh, blue in place. So the challenge is going to be getting the location of the blue one or the cream one down first. Oops, that's going to go this way. And that looks about right. So I am going to, so that one's going to hold my blue in place. This one is going to hold my cream in place. I'm just pulling it straight across. Okay. Now we can add our blue. Okay. 
Now these two things I want to kind of glue, uh, plan these together. Seem to come up a little bit more. Okay, that looks good. So I'm going to attach these two pieces first. And then I'm going to attach this. Here. I'm going to overlap this um, this image right here. And the reason I'm doing that is I've one of the die cuts is this, and I've I'm going to layer it. And you'll see what I mean in just a minute. Okay, there we go. Okay, I'm gonna let that dry. It's gonna take a minute because this is quite slippery. Then I'll lift this up as a unit and we'll um, get the adhesive on the back. So what I'm doing right now is I'm gonna pull in, if I can pick it up. So this is gonna get layered right on top. So what I've done on the back is I've added three layers, and it takes a little while to dry, so no big deal, three layers of glue, because it's way too hard to put car uh, chipboard behind that. So I've just um, did a layer of glue, let it dry, go right on top of that layer of glue, let it dry, and the third time, and that's what this is, the third time, let it dry, and then when I place it, it's gonna go over top of this one, so it'll come back over uh, here, so it'll look it'll look good. Take my word for it. And this is going to be placed here. And I know let's get cozy and bundle up. We can either show both, or the other option is to add um, this trinket here and kind of cover up the bundle up and let it, and then just focus on let's get cozy. And I'm kind of going back and forth. So I've got some additional um, bits. I'm going to put this down here uh, because it sort of offsets. This red row, the the flower here, the size and shape of the flower, and then I've got a couple other pieces. I haven't figured out if I'm even going to use them, uh, but I may try to work these into the cover as well. If not, I may cluster these on the back uh, as part of just you know to make the back look a little more interesting. So I'm at the point now where I'm going to pause, make sure these all dry. This is not attached yet. Make sure these all dry, and then come back when this is dry and then we'll layer that on top and that will be our cover. And I'm liking it. This is one of my favorite patterns in the collection, the houses. Um, so I'll be back shortly or maybe not so shortly. That's the other thing we can do with this is place that there and add this here. So we'll, we'll shuffle these two things around until we find the right answer. I'll be back soon. Okay, everyone, I'm back and my I guess it's a reindeer or some kind of deer. Um, it's almost dry. You can see there's still a little bit of time left, but I think it's good enough to go ahead and lay down. So as you recall, the last time we were together, we uh, bound these three um, images together or elements. And now we're ready to go ahead and place them. And then this guy's gonna go right on top of the other one. But as you can see, now we've got all this awesome dimension. So we don't have to, we can go ahead and glue him down actually. And I didn't think about it when I was layering everything, but I actually need less layers over here where it's overlapping. So I'm actually gonna peel off a little bit of what's going on there. Uh, not too much, just a little bit. I'm just gonna use um, an X-Acto knife to kind of shave it down just a little bit, right on the head, right here on the head. And I'm gonna break all the rules. I'm gonna pull the knife to myself instead of away. But I think if I just saw gently, I can get some of this off. I think I need to lay it down. Yeah, that's going to come off nice and easy. And then it's not really, it's not doing anything to the die cut itself. The glue is kind of rubbery. Uh, if you use, let's see how much is going to go, a little bit of the chest. If you use art glitter glue, you know what I mean. It, it dries uh, with flexibility. 
Ouch, and of course I poked myself, but I don't think I did any damage. Uh, tweezers. I'm gonna hold that and then shave this back. And that should be perfect because this is already elevated. And I hadn't thought about that when I was adding the glue to this uh, die cut. And actually, if you take a look, it's coming off. And that's because this is a slick surface. There was no tooth on it, so it's not tearing it at all. So that one little strip that I put on its chest, I'm just peeling away. Take a little more off the head, and then I think we'll be ready to lay it down. I would not recommend doing that. Yeah. So now this will go directly onto this, and these will be glued onto the one behind it. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Let me see if I got far enough on his head, uh, if it was regular cardstock. Sorry for the in and out noise. Do this part of it a little more. And then I think I'll be done. I don't want that whole thing, just this. I should have tested this before I sat down, but I didn't. Sorry about that, guys. Tiny scissors. Oh, that works really good. The tiny scissors work really good. And here, here, and then the middle should just pop right out. Yep. Yes, it did. So I'm trying to uh, free up the head, but keep the reinforcement on the horns because that's, if anything's going to get snagged, that's where it'll be. I don't want my glue to come out too fast. Now every place I pulled glue up, I need to put it back, and then everything else should be covered by what I just put down here. Okay, so we're just going to match them up, and then when I'm done, I'll show you what it looks like. I'm going to put his foot behind slightly. Try to line up as best I can. Okay, so now you can, it's gonna take a few minutes to see that there's some dimension here. It looks a little messy because there's white glue back there that hasn't dried yet. Try to get some of that excess out. Hold that in place. Now we need to locate it here. And that's about right where I want it. So I want, I don't want it totally centered. I want it a little um, to the outside edge of the book. You're gonna have to be patient when you put this down because like I said, this the chipboard is slick. Um, and because it doesn't have any tooth, it takes a little longer to uh, dry. Okay, I'm gonna try to straighten this up a little bit on my grid so I can get my bearings. It looks good. This is nice and easy because you've got lines to guide you. I think I got a little piece. 
piece of glue stuck here that doesn't belong. There we go. There, now it's laying flat. Alexis. Okay, so that's the bulk of the design. Now the next thing is we're gonna put Let's Get Co Cozy down. I put two layers down and then um, it's gonna go in like so. I Right here, I didn't come all the way down because I just wanted a single layer because I want this to slightly overlap this. Just like so, just slightly. I think. Actually, I like that better, even less of an overlap. And then this was something that we were thinking about using. I was thinking about covering this up, but now I think I'm going to just offset it. Um, I think these two organic shapes really look good here. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. So let's go ahead and glue this down, and we're, we're making real progress here on the cover. <laughs> Okay, we want the words to be straight. So I should straighten this out, that'll help. There we go, I think that's pretty straight. Where's my, so there's cozy. That looks pretty straight. Okay, again, there's two layers of chipboard here, single layer of chipboard here three layers of glue on the body and the horns. Now we'll go ahead and glue this down. Lovely. Okay, give that a few minutes to dry as well. That doesn't belong out here. And then I had, I thought I had two of these and I think it does come with two. I just need to find it. I was gonna put that there in here um, but I'm going to hold off gluing it down until I find the other one. But I do think I want to add a charm here. Um, and when I say a charm, I mean a corner here and here, I think. And the reason I'm hemming and hawing is because... I don't know, I kind of think I might like silver better on here because of all the blue, but maybe not. Um, okay, I'm going to hold off on these. So I'm going to wait to make this decision. If this doesn't materialize, I'm probably going to change my corners this way because there's just too much open real estate here. But for now, I think I'm done. Um, when I come back to add these bits, it'll either be the corners, well, maybe the corners and... Um, the die cuts, but I think there's two die cuts and I think they're mirror images so they oppose each other Beautifully, but for whatever reason I can't find the second one. I think it's probably on the floor somewhere Or my dog towed it off or something. Um, the other thing I might consider adding is um, Just some of this twine it it looks very country-ish to me And so I was thinking that might go well. It's partly because of the colors that they used, right? It's got that country simple, almost almost kind of like an Amish feel to it. So if that's a thing, um, and I think it is simple and elegant. Um, that's, I think, all I have for now. So let me see if I can't find my other um, flourish, and then we can finish up uh, the cover and um, go around to the back and finish the back, and then we will have um, at least the outside of the book done. So thanks everybody for tuning in. As always, this is Daphne from Scrap and Create. One way you can really help the channel is by liking um, our, uh, our projects and um, by sharing. So if you could do any one of those things, it would be greatly appreciated. I'll be back more with, I'll be back with more on this project. See you soon. Hey everyone, it's Daphne. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with covering the back of the album now. And so I'm going to use the pieces that were left over after we finished decorating the cover and the spine. And you can see I've got my little lotion jar in there to hold everything together while, um, while we go ahead and lay this in. So I've trimmed down the two red pieces uh, to three inches each. I'm going to put these down and then I'm going to come back and trim this down to fit. So we're going to lay these down first. These are going to go right over the ribbon. 
<clears throat> so next thing I'm going to do is something like that over is uh, I'm going to add some tape on the back of the ribbon. And the plan is to have the ribbon go underneath the red pieces. And then it's going to go on top of the gray, like so. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm going to tape down from here to here and here to here. <clears throat> and that should help hold everything in place. everybody's doing well. We've had such an abrupt change in our weather. It's kind of nice, but a little surprising. Now, remember, it's going to go underneath the red, so if a little bit of tape is showing right here, it's no big deal. And a little bit is. <laughs> I'll put a second layer here to hold the blue. <clears throat> It doesn't like sticking to the ribbon itself, but okay, I'm going to go ahead and lay down my red piece, provided I have it inked. I do. <clears throat> Hope everybody is having a great day can tell that fall is here because all the spiders are out. <laughs> when I go for a walk in the morning, I see spider webs everywhere, full of dew. And the days are getting short. Oh, I have to wait. Uh, the reason I have to wait is because this is going to go on top. <clears throat> like that. Put that too low, but it's okay. It is going to, I should straighten this out. It's going to be under the red. Okay, so let's trim this down to fit. Let's figure out where the red's going to go. Now, if you want, you can just put, you know, keep the ribbon under everything. I think it's going to look a little interesting to have it come through, but it's all a preference. It certainly would be easier to just have it go straight under. Okay. I'll tell you what this turns out to be roughly. So once I trim this down, it looks like it's going to be at two inches. <clears throat> like that. No tape holding it down here and then tape holding it down over here. Just check in to make sure it's all going to fit. Well, it looks perfect. Okay, so the next thing we'll do is we'll ink the edge we trimmed and put down the gray. <clears throat> And I'm going to kind of leave it loose for the moment um, until I get the red back up here, just in case I need to trim it any further. I don't think I do, but. Okay, and we'll add that second piece of tape here. Okay. 
and then it'll also allow me to center it between the two red pieces. It looks perfect. I did two thirds of the paper, slide it under. And then we'll just fold that back and get that last bit. Looks good. Got a little bit of a fold from uh, when it was on the um, the card. <clears throat> so these ribbons did come with the bundle. If you guys buy the bundle, the ribbons will come along. Let's see, do a little bit of housekeeping. Okay, so we've got some ribbon on the front, nothing on the spine. And then we go back and forth on the back. I think that turned out very nicely. Okay, so let's get this back under here. I'd like to do something on the spine, so I'm going to pull in my uh, goodie basket. <clears throat> By the way, I get these silver trays from the dollar store, and they're perfect because they nest on top of each other and can help you keep things sort of separated. So let's... I think I kind of like this one because it, there's so much contrast with it. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to trim off my little tabs and uh, ink it and lay it down on the spine. <clears throat> you can also use like an emery board to sand these down so that they're not as obvious. And then I think I'm going to find something to go on the back as well, <clears throat> just to add a little interest to the back side. Okay, so in this tray, I've got some charms, chipboard, and then I also have the um, the die cut. So I think I'm going to use the die cut, and I like the die cuts for the back because they're flat. So when you open your book, um, it's not uh, it doesn't teeter. There's a lot of blue in here, it's not a whole lot of red. I don't really want to cover up the bunny. 
So I think I may just keep it super simple. <clears throat> Let's keep it like that. I think it looks good and clean. Make sure you get glue on all these little bits because they'll want to peel up on you. The tips of them. Especially if you slide it across um, something that's not very smooth like your lap. Out everything. And it takes a little bit for this to dry because it's so um, slick. There's no tooth to it. So I'm going to center it on my black line and then um, put it on the top third of the ribbon. So that's the back that'll dry and be a lot less obvious. Um, it will dry matte. Okay. So I think we are done with the cover. So in a few minutes, once I do a little bit of housekeeping, I'll be back and we'll do the inside. The inside uh, liners are going to be large, uh, full-size uh, pockets. Um, so we can put lots of goodies inside the pockets. like. Um, tags and anything that you want to save from Christmas, like notes or, or Christmas cards from people uh, that you'd like to have a place to stash um, will fit nicely inside those large pockets. Okay, I'll be back soon. Okay, everyone, I've got uh, the inside liners all prepared. So I'm going to go ahead and start by giving you the measurements. So this is nine and a quarter, nine and a quarter across, and it's six and a half inches deep nine and a quarter, six and a half. You're gonna score a half inch on either side of the nine and a quarter, and then a half inch across the bottom of the six and a half so that you make a pocket. going to use this gray which is from the patterns and solids to go on the bottom of the pocket oh actually I need to wait because we're going to use magnets um, let's go ahead and get our flap in our flap is three and one eighth three and one eighth by eight and a quarter so three and one eighth by eight and one quarter I'm going to turn this over so I can see the edges better I'm applying. I'm going to put down one corner as a pivot point. Until I get this where I want it. And I'm lining it up with the edge of this score line. There we go. Okay, now we're going to add a magnet. Thank you. 
There we go. Okay, now we're going to start by putting the gray down. You guys all looking forward to Christmas? Can't believe it's already, we're already in October. My, my dog's fussing because it's time for us to go outside. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and finish this all up, and then we're going to repeat this process over here. Okay, so the next thing... <clears throat> This came from the 12 by 12 collection pack. And I'm gonna line our pocket with this. And I've trimmed them back to back so the pattern continues. Make sure I've got it all inked. This is bigger than it needs to be, so I'm gonna leave my leading edge without glue and tuck it inside the pocket. Just makes it easier to maneuver. For those of you that are new, um, I always do a um, 16th inch border, which means that the height needs to be, for the designer paper, the height needs to be 1 8 inch shorter and 1 8 inch narrower. And when centered, that gives you a 16th inch border. So I made a mess there. Ooh, you know what? It's very tight. No, it's going to slide up a little. There we go. And now we have that continuous pattern. <clears throat> okay, and then red is what's going to go on the outside. And I might put um, a little tab or something to sort of um, indicate that this is a flap or a pocket underneath. Let's see, we could do a ribbon piece. We could do a loop. Or what looks like a tab underneath. Or we can do a circle. And I think I'll add a circle punch is what I'll do. And I'll do that later. <clears throat> I like the backs, the very faint pattern on the back side too. I'll use that inside. It's very subtle. Okay, so that's it for the inside liner. So I'm just gonna repeat that process over here. Um, and I think I'll go ahead and do that offline. So all the measurements are the same. I'll go over those one more time. The pocket is nine and a quarter, nine and a quarter by six and a half. And you're gonna score half inch on three sides to make your pocket. And the flap is eight and a quarter by three, and one eighth, eight and a quarter by three and one eighth. Okay. All right, guys, when I come back, that'll be done. And then the next time we get together, we will um, be adding our pages.